Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we're going to have a closer look at AMD's Mantle API. We've got Wheels' bench here, which conveniently he's not sitting on, because if he was, I wouldn't be able to lift it. Not that that's a, you know, heavy joke. Uh, so we've got his bench here, which he has outfitted with some AMD goodness, including a 290X, a 260X, and an APU. He put Mantle through the paces with Battlefield 4, and let's see how it goes. So let's start with a brief overview of what Mantle is exactly. It's a new API that was developed by AMD in partnership with game developers. Uh, most, you know, obviously DICE, because they're the first ones that have actually released a Mantle game. Now, why do we need Mantle? Great question. We already have DirectX, and DirectX acts as an intermediary layer between the game engine and then the uh, graphics card with its driver. And, and what happens with an intermediary layer is sometimes you lose efficiency and it can incur a performance penalty. What Mantle does, and this is sort of AMD's spin on it, is it complements that DirectX functionality that's, that's already there. I mean, they're not saying their cards aren't going to be DirectX compliant in the future. That's still going to be there, but it adds a more direct path that gives the developer lower level access to code directly to the hardware instead of assuming that intermediary software layer. So this is similar to what developers are able to do for game consoles. Now while the Xbox One and the PS4 do use a GCN based architecture just like AMD's desktop graphics cards, that doesn't mean that they use Mantle, and in fact that theory was debunked. No, instead, all AMD is really saying is that some of the, some similar programming practices apply between those two different platforms. So someone who developed a game for PS4 and Xbox One might be able to use some of the same tricks to port it to the PC using the Mantle API. That's, that's really all there is to it. Now, for now, Mantle is Windows only, so no Linux or SteamOS or uh, OS X or anything like that, and it is still an AMD proprietary technology, although a public SDK is planned to be released sometime later in 2014. Um, in addition to Mantle compatible hardware, so that is a GCN based graphics card or APU, so anything 7000 series and up on the desktop side or Kaveri and up on the APU side will support Mantle, but you also have to have a supported driver, so the 14.1 beta driver or later, and you will need a supported game engine and a supported game. So Battlefield 4, the Nitrous game engine, Sniper Elite, Three Star Citizen, and Thief are right now the support games, although AMD expects to add many more developers and many more games to that list. Beyond that, Mantle doesn't affect much from the user's perspective. You just use a drop-down to select the appropriate Mantle API when, I, when you choose your game renderer, and it supports, you know, multi-GPU, frame pacing, iFinity, all that stuff. The image quality should, in theory, be exactly the same, but what it comes down to is performance. It reduces the load on the CPU and actually spreads the load on the CPU in such a way that your frame rate should increase, but not necessarily just by like somehow, you know, uh, you know, putting like molten performance onto your graphics card and making the graphics card inherently perform faster. No, it'll actually affect you most in CPU limited scenarios, especially if you have a multi-core CPU and you just didn't have enough single threaded performance before, now you could be in a much better situation. So for Wheels as benchmarks, he used a Kaveri A10 7850K, and thanks to AMD for providing the platform and graphics hardware for that. For the benchmarking procedure, Wheels used the Shanghai level, and there was a bit of a deviation from the normal procedure because Fraps, which hooks into DirectX for tracking frames per second, doesn't work with Mantle. So you got to use Battlefield 4's built-in benchmarking tool. There's some pretty good guides for that online. So it's pretty straightforward, but you just use a couple console commands to turn it on, and it spits out uh, it spits out a file very similar to what Fraps does. So there were three GPUs tested, all with the A10 7850K. So there was the Kaveri uh, GPU built onto the APU alone, a 260X, and a 290X. So I'll let the benchmark numbers kind of pop up here, but in general, what we have to say is that on Kaveri, we were able to achieve anywhere from an 8 to 14% performance improvement. With the 260X, 
we got about a 9% improvement at medium details, and with the 290X, a 21% improvement at ultra details. So while the results weren't as stellar and amazing as some of the other reviews we've seen, it should be noted that it really depends on the gameplay segment that you're benchmarking, it depends on the rest of the system configuration, and it looks like uh, the APU in particular, uh, Wheels was only using DDR3-1600 memory, and higher speed memory will help the onboard GPU perform better. And so, as with so many things, when it comes to drivers, when it comes to brand new technology, your mileage may vary, but the takeaway here, if nothing else, is that it didn't cost anything to you, the owner of an AMD graphics card, and you, the owner of Battlefield 4, and it did amount to a performance improvement, so... If nothing else, I'm excited to see where this is heading in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from NCIX.com.